Shina, um, every Yupa. I'm Östen. It's not my true name, but if you want that, you would be some sort of magical creature, wouldn't you? Anyway, I'm a Swedish textile historian, and I was thinking what I wanted to do for long form content, since some of you might know me from TikTok, was I want to watch Ariaster's Midsommar and talk about the folk costumes in it, and the folk costumes from Sweden surrounding it, since that's my area of expertise. Now some of you might be expecting me to wear my textile history jumper since it's textile history jumper time but I thought it would be more fitting to wear my I'm wearing my Varensdrekt um, which isn't from Helsingland but it's a Swedish fall costume so we're going with it Sorry, changing angles, you guys need to appreciate my actual flower crown that I made because when I'm posting this it's gonna be midsummer so we're watching midsummer on midsummer So, before we start um, there are probably gonna be some people who maybe are familiar or aren't familiar with Swedish folklore who are gonna be like this movie is so inaccurate, they didn't do their homework, this is nothing like what Swedish folklore is like and I just wanted to start out by saying they actually consulted with Ebbe Schön who is a very famous Swedish folklorist and um, I mean I believe Ebbe over you, sorry um, and I also having read some folklore is I'm not angry at what they did they did a good job, they did some easter eggs from Swedish folklore um, and they used things from Swedish folklore and made it their own and it's a movie, so don't be angry in the comments or be be angry because that's um, the drives interaction I'm... yes please please this uh, film and yes, if you're actually wondering, I am wearing seven kinds of flowers on my head you can probably count them if I sit still for a while and the number seven is a lucky number in Swedish folklore as well as the number nine and the number three, and those numbers are represented in Midsummer folklore. Being seven and nine are the number of flowers you can pick for. So the the one I grew up with is that you have to pick seven kinds of flowers on Midsummer's night, and you have to do it in silence. And you should probably also climb over seven different fences. Um, but some people do nine, some people do walk around the church, some people do uh, different things. Let's get started! It's a pretty good uh, approximation of Swedish folk art, maybe? It's, it's not... Um, you see at the top there, there's like two um, rows of decoration and that's that's the swirly one is pretty Swedish the lower one is obviously more runic um, but I'd say the the suns between it is is good if you're going for Helsingland and then this the chair the throne at the top looks like a uh, it has some dalmoleri or kurbits on it and that's that's good too um, the people being dressed in what looks like 18th century-esque folk costumes is also good. There's a there's a Missamarstong. There are not enough pine trees in this one. But also the skeletons uh, playing the fiddle. That's that's a good good head. There's a good reference to Horgelåten, um, being that the devil was supposed to play the violin and everyone danced to death, and then the skeletons are playing the music. That's I like it. Valotsmodus, I think. So Valotsmodus is uh, the mode in which you would sing Swedish folk music. It's it's very distinct, distinctly Swedish folk music in that way, um, particularly the herding calls uh, which we associate with Helsingland and Dalarna from herding maids called Kullur uh, who would kula or uh, call out to it's a bit like yodeling, but it sounds a, dif a bit different. But it would be to communicate with other people in the forest when you were herding cattle in the forest. 
but she's doing it far too low for it to be actually kindling. See, you could be getting that girl pregnant right now. And don't forget about all the Swedish women you can impregnate in June. Okay. Don't forget about all of the Swedish women you could impregnate in June. Yes, good good goals. Happy midsummer. Sankt Hansen att det var inte lång. Is that, a, is that a John Bauer painting? Being very sad beneath a John Bauer painting in bed. I know the feeling. I also have a John Bauer painting above my bed, and sometimes I am very sad beneath it. <laughs> so Swedish, Swedish experience. But there's um, there's all. I think they sold that one at IKEA, which makes it um, extra Swedish experience. People in her and you all know that she's coming. Great. Yep. Hey. hey, babe. So, Sweden. Yeah. You're coming, right? I mean, I... I guess so. That's not completely ruining your guys' plans. Oh, no, 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 no. not at all. No. Pella just playing along. It's uh, no Swedish social awkwardness, no confrontation, only playing along. And also, he seems very happy for her to be coming along. Yeah. It's sort of a crazy nine-day festival my family's doing. A nine-day festival? See? Nine! Of pageantry and uh -huh. special ceremonies and dressing up. That sounds fun. It'll probably seem very silly, but it's like theater. Here, I'll show you. You see what you mean about the pageantry. Yeah, we make those clothes special for every winter and summer solstice. Winter solstice too! I want the Lucia version now. Swedish commentary from the pilot. It's very nice. And uh, 15 degrees at midsummer. Accurate. You wouldn't actually have the blue sign actually. Um because Helsingland is not its own land. Yeah, it's part of Jävleborgs land, Jämtlands land and Västervånlands land. So it's divided up. Uh, the landscape is not its own piece of legislative region. Um, so you wouldn't have that sign, the blue sign, because the blue sign is just for legisl legislative regions, which Helsingland is not an accurate fail, helt enkelt. Hi. Danny. Oh, our first look at a, um, a dress. And you can see there she's in all white, which I don't mind. Uh, Swedish folk costume is obviously not all white, but there is some white at least. And um, Andrea Flesch, the costumer, said that she got a hold of a hundred year old linen fabric made from flax, and that's oof, mm, luxury. Um, so we love that part. And um, but you can see that the um, the cut of the shirt. First of all, it's not very Swedish. It's not a Scandinavian um, silhouette. It would have been cut like on the shoulder here. Um, this one it, it looks like and then gathered in the ring for the neck. And uh, no, we would not do it like that. We do it more like medieval garments where you have pieces that are uh, rectangular and you have the sleeves and then the body and then another sleeve and and it would turn more out more like this and then gathers what kind of a tree is that that's not a swedish tree hi hi oh look a gathered sleeve yay why are you wearing long trousers though just walking across saying hello, not s stopping, doing anything else, like, that's proper Swedish behaviour. Not gonna learn anyone's names, no. Dras helvete. That is not what Swedish northern forests look like, I'm sorry to say. Those trees are far too short. They should be. Are those are those diaper pants backs? Yes, yes they are. Good. They have uh, sewed it traditionally. We approve. 
Oh. Thank you. Those are very short skirts. Strawberry. Short sleeves. Gotta say, we don't do short sleeves in Swedish folk costuming. That's um, we do. Um, we do like no sleeves, like just a little ribbon, and we do long sleeves. But we don't do short sleeves unless something bad has happened to you. So uh, the costumer Andrea Flesch was working with Hungarian opportunities to get costumes, and uh, yeah, I can say that's not accurate. Also, the embroidery is. Um, well, we don't really do color work embroidery in Sweden. We do white work, like I've got white work on my costume, and we do black work in like two counties. Um, like two villages have black work embroidery. So the, the the color on the girl with the short sleeves and the shoulders on the girl taking the bedroll, that's no, we would not have that. But it's not an accurate piece to that part of Sweden. So, it's okay. I think photos. Um, it was a great time. 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 Most powerful uh, heat wave in uh, forever. It was 15 degrees outside. Yes, that's Swedish, Swedish summer for you. Oh, look at her back. Look at her back. That's a little skirt. That's a little tailpiece. And um, I don't think I've seen a bodice that has that particular tailpiece, but um, there is a tailpiece. We like it. Let's raise our glasses and let our nine day feast commence. Skål! 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 I don't have anything to skål with. Um, I have got myself something to skål with. It is midsummer after all. Skål! So hög, min um, her headwear might actually be an allusion to some headwear they have in Dalarna. Um, I think it reminds me of a uh, Rättviks gråluva, I think they're called. They're little pointy hats. Um, but it's it's obviously not one of those, but it might be inspired by one of those. That's cool. These houses are not red enough. It, they're very dark. That seems very Norwegian to me. They should be painted red. It's a long dance. We do do that. It's a medieval tradition that we do on midsummer usually. Uh, long dance or ring dance. Depending if you're doing it in a ring or not in a ring. You usually don't sing like that though. As a, as a folk musician as well. Um, I am many things in this life. As a folk musician, I've got to say, we don't use drums, so um, that's inaccurate. But the violins is good. Well, how do you support this place? Lumbering, linen, homeopathic. Oh, 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 lumbering and linen, uh, really big industries in Helsingland, historically. Uh, lumber because there's a lot of woodland, and uh, Helsingelin and Helsingeline was very famous because it was Helsingland was a big exporter of flax and linen fabrics and that's how uh, Helsingland traditionally made their fortunes uh, so they could build big houses called Helsingegårdar and these farmers who had linen production down to uh, science they uh, they did really well for themselves so that's good easter egg and let me show you the rotvälta so we're just gonna ignore the bed it's a bear Don't don't call it a don't call it a bear, Ingmar. Don't say that. I know you've got him in the cage, but he might have family, and calling a bear a bear will bring others there. It rhymes, but it's not an old saying. Um, you would call him old father or sweet father or uh, sweet paws, or you could call him twelve man strong, but you don't say bear. That's actually we don't know the actual word for bear. In Germanic languages, because bear was a uh, a nickname, as to not call him there. Don't call him bear. Good school. Mm, tvätt. Good laundry. Too much color on those embroideries, unless they're interior pieces. It's a love spell. Oh, 
oh, oh, oh, oh, oh, she picks flowers, she's in love, she picks flowers and then she puts the flowers under her pillow and she dreams about the one she's in love with marrying her. And that's actually a, an accurate representation of one of the mystical rituals surrounding Midsommar, even in real Sweden. Um, this looks printed. Why would they have a several color, or is it painted maybe, but it's not embroidered, I'm disappointed. You should embroider things more often, um, I would appreciate it. She's sleeping, she wakes up by the crow. And, oh, she's doing some uh, actual, actual folk magic, I'm not gonna show that to you guys. But he gets entranced by her folk magic and they get married and she's pregnant. And there's some, um, some cool bits in the background. painted ceiling. What do you think? Let's talk Helsingin Gårdar. So Helsingin Gårdar are these very rich, like I said, they, they made their fortune selling flax and uh, they had the people in Helsingland built big houses and in the, inside those houses they hired people to paint the ceilings and paint the rooms and it's really very spectacular. It's, it's kind of like this. Um, here are some pictures from Skansen, uh, Desbogården at Skansen painted by uh, Reuter, I think they, he's called, uh, Gustav Reuter, and um, yeah, it's it's as breathtaking as they're making it out in the movie. It's very, very cute, magical, but it wasn't only in uh, Helsingland, they would actually paint churches, for example, and houses in Östergötland, they'd paint them in Västergötland, um, castles are often painted on the inside, so this, yeah, this is Swedish tradition, but very, very common in, in Helsingland as well. Cool. Cool thing to apply in the movie. Are these the May Queens? Am I the May Queen this year? I'll do my best. Why would there be a May Queen in June? Hmm. Was that a pair of scissors? A pair of scissors is used, um to ward against evil and magic because one it's made of steel and two if you fold it up it it makes a cross um, and steel is the metal to ward against magic in, in Swedish folk folklore don't at me about iron steel is mostly iron so what's tomorrow first of the big ceremonies at the stupa it's pretty actual. Fuck. Do you know what it is? Really good movie making point that they're um, they're telling, they're letting the characters know more than the audience um, for tension, except for the pairs, the characters who don't know what's going on. But when I watched this movie, I was like, it's Dupa. Hey. <laughs> As a Swedish person, and then um, as as they're gathering on the ledge, it's like hoppa, 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 because you know what's going on. It's it's not um, the the surprise is ruined, so we're or I'm I'm being very a bit evil about it. <laughs> okay, so it's laundry day. Textile historian comes in. You can see them wringing stuff, um, and and. Yeah, it's very theatrical, and it's, it looks a bit like dancing, it looks a bit like slang polska. But would, imagine ringing something that's just been washed like that, and you just get it running down your neck all the time, that's... I'm not... that's not approved. Don't do that. It's a terrible idea. But, um... Yeah, if, if you do ringing linen fabric, you can ring it quite hard. It's not like wool, you don't have to be careful in that way. This better be a snaps visa. You don't sing it at the table unless it's a snaps visa. So if this doesn't end in a school, I'm going to be very disappointed. It is a school! 
Paul! Hey! There's an actual pig, look! Yay! It's the, um, the sausage around her head. It's a pig, look. Do they salute twice? They do. Good. Scott. Short sleeves again. Disappointed. Disappointed. Are you okay? Yeah. Look at those trasmatter. It's beautiful. Rag rugs is a Swedish tradition, and uh, having them on wood floors is a Swedish aesthetic peak. You know, I think my sister Maya is taking a liking to you. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Redhead. And actually, she okay. just uh, got big smidden dig last year. Oof. She's fifteen. Thank you. What are they drinking? Is that Ian Bastrika? <gasps> oh, oh, oh! Did you see her cobble France? Did you see her cobble France? Did you see her cobble France? I did. Um, at the <laughs> at the end of her sleeves, she is wearing. Um, uh, well, obviously it's cuffs first, and then there's uh, sort of a sausage shape. In red, blue, and yellow, and it's uh, it's called a kavel frans. Uh, you make it by wrapping thread around a, um, a stick, and then you fluff it up with steam. Uh, really traditional. That's what you get for wearing your shoes to bed. Oh, 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 is this, are they claiming this is taking place on Horgaberget? But, but they're in a valley, there's mountains on the side, it wouldn't be here, it would be up a mountain. I lipsbejakande trots mot en mörke så dansar vi tills vi stupar. Och hon som står ensam kvar kommer att krönas för sin uthållighet. Okej, så missomarstång with three rows of girls. Play la chanson de l'ognon. Do the little frog dance. Do it. So you have two drums, you don't have any drums in Swedish folk music. Do they have a nickel harpa? Yes, they have a nickel harpa. Nice. Ding dance? Yes. Will you do a chain? Do a chain. La chanson de l'Avion! Play la chanson de l'Avion! Veva badmal! Bad mal. It's a very long uh, bad mal. Come on, do the little frog dance. It'll be fun, I promise. <laughs> Okay, so let's talk about the fact that it's silk flowers and what that means. Um, her headdress looks a bit like uh, a drawing by Nils Mose of Maldegren uh, of a bride in, I think, 
think it's Skåne, it might be somewhere else, but it's somewhere in Sweden. And you would wear silk flowers at weddings sometimes, and this I think this will be where she's May Queen being. Midsummer would sometimes contain fake weddings, and I think this ceremony sort of alludes to who will be the fake bride. And one of the things you would do uh, when having actual weddings later in the year would be that they weren't in the summertime because right now it's midsummer and we've just been able to pull out the first tiny fresh potatoes and it's been historically it's been a rough couple months since uh, March March through May is not it's not when you eat the best you can have nettle nettle soup and you can have whatever's left from the winter stores but you don't get actual fruits or anything salvageable until August at the earliest, uh, unless it's berries. So you wouldn't have weddings when there's a lot of flowers, like in May and June. You'd actually wait to have weddings because there's not enough food to have a wedding feast in May or June. And then uh, all over the summer, like July, um, July, August, September, October even, is all those months are made for uh, bringing in the bounties that you have grown so those are harvest months all of them basically and you'd have to work in the fields and not have time to plan a party um, where you invite everyone they have to drop what they're doing at their farms and come to your house for a week no it's, it's a crucial time for reaping what you've sowed so you would actually have weddings uh, during the winter months when things have been stored because then you have food to give to everyone and the hard work of the summer is over and then you don't have any actual natural flowers so you would instead uh, clothe the bride in silk or paper flowers which means that since they couldn't actually use real flowers in the movie that makes it more accurate um, in a way and you'll see that later with her dress as well. It, it, it harkens back to the same sort of tradition where you would deck the bride out in the most you could. And, and since it was winter, that was silk or paper flowers. So that's, um, I don't think it was intentional by Andrea Flesch, but it actually makes it more accurate in my opinion. <laughs> the collar that she's wearing, I don't, I haven't seen that, but uh, it could be really cool. Honestly, Siv's, um, Siv's whole, uh, can't... Siv's whole silhouette is the most correct from a Swedish folk costume perspective, and she wears the best hats. Um, so, yeah, 8 out of 10. How do you feel about mine, yeah? About Maya? How do I feel about her? How? You have been approved to mate with her. You're an ideal astrological match. And she has fixed her hopes on you. Remember, she's 15. That's what Bix Mindig means. Unless this cult is even younger. Um, 15 is the legal consent age in Sweden. To our May Queen! <laughs> the embroidery on the priest's mask, I guess you could call it, looks a bit like the back of a middle star. No, um. But it is middle star, right? They have a plate for a hat. And after a wedding, the bride wears it. Um, it's part of the full costume, and it looks a bit like that. Um, but yeah, that that embroidery is more commonly associated with a female costume. But I like the inclusion of it. She's fifteen. Put it into it. 
It's a very nice uh, embroidery on on what's his face's shirt. Christian. Yes, look at that. It looks like a bit of um well, I shouldn't say pull out after the stunt he pulled, but <laughs> it's um pulled work, uh pulled thread embroidery, I think, and a bit of other stuff maybe. But anyway, it's white work, so that's nice. That's we like to see that. That's very Swedish. Kill him. Kill him. Well, Christian. Han har aldrig varit något bra för dig. Han vill ändå göra sig av med dig. Och han har varit otrogen mot dig. Vem? Honom! Ja. Oh, rock! The first rock we've seen. That's very nice. It's white and it, it's linen, but it's it's quite good. It's a good silhouette. The see of fancy socks. I like his fancy socks, fancy man. Very thin socks. They have embroidery on their side, which uh, is Norwegian more than Swedish, I think. But it's cool. It's still Scandinavian. We can get behind it. Mäktiga och hemska bäst. Best costume of the day. Oh, look! Look at her. Um, the uh, tails, the peplum of her bodice on Maya. Um, that's not really a design we see in Sweden. The closest we get is Skedevi, uh, I think, which has so, sort of like that, but it's not quite the same. So I think that's more medieval inspired, maybe Renaissance, um, 16th century, I could imagine. But, but it's cool, I like it. Yeah, this is basically Nisoma. Um, as far as I can, uh, remember this this is how we end all of our celebrations honestly it's the herring it does things to your mind yeah so it's over um, okay so the costuming is pretty good. It has some influences of Swedish folk costuming. I can definitely see where Andrea Flash did a good job. Um, the white is appreciated as it is. Flax, uh, linen fabric. I, I like that. And um, I'd say that in Swedish tradition, both blue and red, which figure a lot in these in this movie, are traditional colors for interior design fabrics. So um, towels would be red and blue, pillows might be red and blue, uh, embroidery along a bed might be red and blue. All of those things are real. Um, and it reminds me of that, but it wouldn't be used on clothes because clothing is usually white work embroidery. It might have some red um, details, but it wouldn't be that much. Um, but under the context of it being made by them in the village, that's quite um, that's realistic enough with the traditions that we do have of red and blue. The yellow is, is not what I would t say was correct, but it is. It's good to have a third color, I guess. The primaries, red, blue and yellow. And yellow does figure, but it's not as widely used as red and blue. Just look at me. I'm, I'm red and blue. So that, that's really good Swedish colors, good Scandinavian colors, red and blue, and, and they're not just Scandinavians, but portraying a Scandinavian culture, yes, red and blue is good. Um, well, so I have a pet theory, a headcanon about this movie, which is that since the uh, they do a lot of, of Norse, ancient Norse practices, according to what we know from the sagas, like the blood eagle and the etestupa. My thought is that these people are cultists who have have their origins in the national romantic movement. <laughs> <coughs> so the national romantics in the early 20th century, um, turn of the century, was um, they were very preoccupied with Norse mythology and Norse 
traditions and paganism like that and and they would have these symbols like runes and um, snake uh, formations and I think that in my head canon these people who have moved to Horga but aren't actually part of the, the real Horga village um, they would be national romantics from Stockholm who decided to leave their life of privilege behind possibly it is that they come together to have this ceremony in the summers, but if it is that they are uh, steadfastly um, living in that part of Helsingland, then they have been uh, disconnected from society for about a hundred years now, um, in this head canon of mine, and they have made their own version of Swedish traditions, which would be the reason why it's, it's not, they didn't dance the little frog dance, for example, which is mandatory that otherwise. Um, because Le Chanson de l'Union hadn't been turned into a Swedish Midsummer Dance by that point. And that's also the reason why they're all speaking Stockholmian, because they came from Stockholm. It's not that all of the actors have a, a an acting, like a received pronunciation, but in Swedish. Um, no, it's because they're <laughs> the clan, the cult, comes from Stockholm to begin with, and then they've taught their children to speak Stockholmian. And all of the people living outside of this commune, in the real Holger village shop, in, around in Helsingland, they're like, ooh, hoo, hoo, that's the people you don't want to associate with. Let's leave them alone. Call the police if something happens. I guess they're having a big midsummer fire. But yeah, that would explain a lot of this. Um, because as I've said, the biggest plot hole is they didn't dance the little frog dance. Very disappointed. Um, and that gets pretty rough too, so you'd probably have some someone standing on the left. But uh, since it is midsummer, if you want to do some actual Swedish midsummer traditions, I'm, I'm guessing you might see this later in the day. So picking flowers is a good one, seven or nine. Uh, do it in silence. You'll be golden, and then you'll dream about whoever you, you're going to marry. You don't have to do the the love ritual with the uh, body hair afterwards. Um, but just picking the flowers is good enough, and then putting them under a pillow and sleeping on top of them. And then um, also doing the salty porridge. So you, you, you make porridge from oats, oatmeal, and then you um, salt it heavily, on like a lot, a lot of salt, three tablespoons or something, so that it, it's salty enough um, for you to be thirsty. You have to be thirsty, that's a big thing. You eat that just before bed, and then you go to sleep and you're supposed to dream about whoever you're going to marry is going to offer you a drink of water to alleviate your salty thirst. And um, yes, you will be thirsty for that. <laughs> so that's, that's one thing you could do. And then um, maybe go looking for uh, the flower of the, um, the fern flowers, flowers of the ferns, that, yes. Ferns don't have flowers, but on Midsummer they might have one, and that's magical. Um, so go look for that, that's also in Swedish folklore as well as, I, I believe, Slavic folklore. Um, but yeah, that, that's about it. Thanks for coming. Uh, if you like this video, please like. Uh, maybe consider subscribing if you do. Um, and uh, Glommy Summer. Skål! Oh no, I haven't sung any... I haven't sung any... Snaps visa, I gotta sing a snaps visa too. Eat your herring, uh, drink your snaps and sing Små grodorna, små grodorna är lustiga att se Små grodorna, små grodorna är lustiga att se Ej öron, ej öron, ej svansar har vad det Ej öron, ej öron, ej svansar har vad det Koa kaka, koa kaka, koa kaka kaka Koa kaka, koa kaka, koa kaka kaka Glöm inte